Creating a YouTube video like this one is demanding and time consuming. From finding the right topic to researching and writing the script, recording the voiceover and editing the final product, the entire process usually takes a team of professionals several days. But what if there was a program out there that did the whole thing for you in just minutes? NVIDIA AI claims to be all-in-one generative AI video production assistant that can transform your idea into a finished product in minutes. It sounds too good to be true, but is it? That's what we'll try to find out as I walk you through this NVIDIA AI tutorial. As usual, the timestamps can be found below. Let's get to it. Signing up and managing settings. To get started, you'll have to sign up for an NVIDIA account. In the video description below, you'll find our sign up link, which will guarantee that you're getting the best deal NVIDIA has to offer. Once you're here, you can create an account by signing in with Google, Apple, or by entering an email the old fashioned way. After that, you'll need to answer a few questions to help NVIDIA customize your experience. For this video, I choose to sign up as a content creator. When you've answered all the questions, you will arrive at the dashboard. Here, you can start a new video by chatting with the AI. Before we begin creating a video, however, I'll walk you through the dashboard. Let's start by turning on some essential settings. Click on your profile picture in the upper right and open settings. Here, you'll want to enable beta features so you have full access to all NVIDIA has to offer. I also want to talk about the default export visibility setting here at the bottom. When your first video is ready, you'll have the option to share or download it. By default, this is set to public, meaning that any anonymous in-video user can view and download your creation. If you want to safeguard what you create, then flip this to private. Next up is members. As you can see, we're currently using all the available seats in this workspace. To add more users, we'll need to upgrade our plan, picking a plan or trying it for free. We can do that by clicking on subscription and selecting upgrade plan. NVIDIA recently changed its plan structure, so I'll take a moment to explain how the plans differ. The plus plan gets you limited number of credits and iStock, which are the currencies of NVIDIA. Credits are consumed when creating or editing a video. The longer the video, the more credits it will cost to make. iStocks are the licensable media assets you can access. When you move to export a video, the number of stock photos or images used will be calculated, and a single iStock point will be deducted for each iStock asset used. While you'll have access to more storage and clonable voices, more on that soon, as well as more credits and iStock with their pricier plans, the main takeaway is that the plus plan does not include any generated video time. Instead, it can only use stock footage. For now, I'll stick with the free plan and see what we can create using only stock assets. So let's head back to the dashboard and get started. Choosing models and selecting a template. All right, the first thing we need to do is choose our model. You can see that we're using version 4.0, which is the newest model at the time of recording. If you want to use an older model, select it from the drop down menu here. I strongly recommend sticking with the latest model as it will have the latest features, likely be the most responsive and can generate higher video resolutions. We can get started by typing our prompt in the box here, or we can choose to use a workflow. Workflows are templates, and we can select workflows at the bottom here to pick from a vast library. For example, we could choose to create a short video, a brand story, or a faceless explainer. Since I'll be entering a prompt manually, let's close this menu. Back on the dashboard, you'll also notice that you can choose to upload a script by clicking right here. If you're a script writer but have no idea how to narrate or edit, then this would be helpful for you. Prompting. Okay, so let's try to create a YouTube short about space exploration. I'll give the AI the following prompts. Create a 60 second YouTube short about space exploration, specifically outside of the Milky Way. Use mysterious music that captures the vastness of space. Make sure to mention the first landing on the moon and future space colonization efforts. That should be the right amount of detail to give the AI a clear picture of what we're looking for, but not so much that it becomes overwhelmed. At this point, you can hit generate my video if you want, but the narrator will be a generic stock AI voice. While I could prompt the AI to use a distinct accent or be a specific gender, it's also possible to use your voice for the voiceover. If you want to go this route, then make sure to copy and paste your prompt somewhere in the meantime. I will shove it into Google Docs. Voice cloning. All right, to use your voice, select clone myself at the bottom and click clone just your voice here on the right. If you'd like, you can go through the entire process of creating an animated or lifelike avatar 
to appear in a video, but I'll be sticking with voiceover narration only for this tutorial. Now, you'll be prompted to upload a minute-long recording of your voice. With your voice uploaded, you will need to give NVIDIA your consent by clicking Record Consent. You'll need to grant NVIDIA AI access to your camera and microphone for the next step. With permission given, you'll be asked to read a short prompt at the bottom and repeat a short passcode. This recording will be compared to the file you upload to verify your voice. Follow the remaining on-screen instructions. Since this is the voice I want to use for this video, I'll click Use. While the voice clone settings have been added, our prompt is missing. Just paste it back in before the clone voice setting at the top of the box. Give your prompt one last review, and if you're ready, click Generate My Video to get started. Video generation. This will take a couple of minutes, so feel free to get up, grab a drink, and take care of something around the house. After a couple of minutes, we will end up on this screen. Here we can choose the audiences we want to target, the pace of clips and images, as well as a creative strategy. For my video, I'll go ahead and choose general public, normal pace, and educational. You can also choose to go back and edit your prompt or switch between iStock and Generative AI for footage. If you do choose Generative AI, you'll be spending far more credits and the video generation process will likely take far longer to complete. Once you're all set, hit continue. Depending on the length and complexity of the video, this process could take anywhere from a couple of minutes to over an hour. If you would like to work on something else while you wait, feel free to enable notifications and I'll see you when this step is complete. This may or may not happen to you, but my video got stuck at 100 preparedness, but all I needed to do was refresh the page. Let's watch the video. Making edits and language dubbing. It's not too bad for a starting point, but it definitely needs a lot of TLC. To make edits, click the middle button just below the video right here. The intro absolutely needs a rewrite, so let's tell the AI, rewrite the first five seconds of the video, and be sure to talk about the moon landing in past tense. This will probably take a few minutes. All right, let's see if the intro has been improved. That's certainly better, though far from perfect. It'll be far easier to edit the script as well as anything else we don't like by clicking on the edit button here at the bottom. We have the option to manually change the footage, music, and script. For example, let's open script. Here we can edit each sentence individually. Let's change the first two to when Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon in 1969, tens of millions around the world watched the event live. Armstrong's giant leap inspired a generation and it was only the beginning. Okay, I'll hit save changes. Let's give that update a rewatch. Much better, but I'd like to replace the stock footage used at the beginning. Let's go back to edit and select media. Here, you'll see a comprehensive breakdown of the media used throughout the script. With the first clip already selected, we can choose to upload a clip from our computer, browse stock footage, or have the AI generate something for us. Let's browse stock footage. Here we could look to our hearts content and when we find what we're looking for, click apply and let the AI make the update. Oh, and if we head back to the prompt box, we can instruct the AI to change the language of the voiceover and add new captions. If you're a non-native speaker, it may sound a little off, but it's a cool feature nonetheless. If we're happy with the changes we've made and think the video is ready to go, then let's move to the next step by clicking download at the bottom and choosing export project to timeline. This is a new feature, so you may receive a warning indicating that the timeline editor is unstable. Timeline editing. The timeline editor is where you can make more specific changes to your video. Let's expand the menu here at the bottom and you can see each layer of the video, including the watermark, voiceover, footage, and music. Without upgrading, you're stuck with the watermarks, but they can be easily removed during the editing process if you purchase a plan. To download the video, click on the icon in the upper left-hand corner of your screen and under history, select your projects. Click continue, download, and download video. Since we are still on the free plan, we have to choose stock watermarks and normal, but we can stick with 1080p. Let's continue and render the video. Once your video is done rendering, you can share it by copying and pasting the link or downloading it to your computer. And you've just created your first video. So whether in video AI is right for you, well, that's going to have to be for you to decide. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.